What is up my peeps? Joshua Smith here at GSD Mode Studios, where every week I share new top real estate agent and entrepreneur interviews, along with tips that I'm personally doing inside my business that have allowed me to become one of the top real estate agents and team leaders on the planet. Check us out at gsdmode.com where you can see more free, great content, tips, interviews, resources, trainings, and more that will help you massively grow your real estate business. Also, make sure to check out my personal mentorship coaching program at 90daymastery.com. This is for those of you wanting to create a truly successful real estate business that pays you the money you want as well as gives you the time and freedom to live a life worth living. This is hands down the best, most effective, and most affordable real estate coaching program that exists out there. Thank you so much for all of your support. Now, let's dive on in to today's content. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD interview, where every single week we interview top entrepreneurs and just straight up top badasses that are out there doing big things in their space. Honey, I'm a badass. <laughs> That's it. So, you know, these are, these are guys that are choosing to not play life small, not live life in mediocrity, but choosing to go out there and create epic lives for themselves and for their family. So today, you guys, I'm really stoked and honored to, to have our guest on this guy. I've been following for a long time. You know, master, uh, you know, sales trainer, coach, got to start in the real estate industry, serial entrepreneur. So really excited to have Claude Diamond on the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for inviting me. I'm looking forward to this. I had to look up what uh, uh, GSD uh, meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of those things where so often in, in life and in business, things just kind of happen on accident. When we were starting this, it was going to be called Keeping It Real, like no smokes and mirrors, just real authentic content. And, uh, um, you know, just kind of transitioned in this on, on accident. And, you know, do here we are. happen by accident or do we make things happen? Yeah, you, I, I think uh, uh, when I say by accident, you know, I've always, anything for me in my life at least, um, has not, hasn't been the path that, like for example, I got a real estate to open up a health club, you know, right? And, and then I fell in love with real estate and then I'm pushing real estate and hitting success and then all of a sudden I get asked to coach and consult. I never thought I'd be consulting and now, you know, we have a software company and, you, you know, these things that it, it maybe wasn't the game plan initially, but you push hard and things happen, man. Isn't it, isn't it fun how, you know, you you close a window and a new door opens all the time. Yeah. Uh, I got start. I started out uh, a business. I went to business school. I went to law school. I'm a recovering attorney. Okay. <laughs> I went into. I did corporate America. I sold hot dogs in the South Bronx for Swift Premium in New York City. Um, all this, and then I got real estate fever. Do you remember when you got real estate fever, Josh? Yeah, yeah. You know, I jumped in at 23 years old in, in 2005, yep. and uh, you know, right away. And, and I don't know if it was ever working with the buyers and the sellers, but it was more of the is the first industry where you're just like, holy crap! Where you realize the opportunities <laughs> that exist um, are just massive. I got in. Yeah, I loved real estate. I had real estate fever. Real estate fever is basically when none, when you, whenever your friends or family see you, they run away or hide or <laughs> or look like they're busy because oh they're gonna go oh shit Claude's gonna talk about real estate some more. Yeah, uh, you, you know. <laughs> can I use that? Can I use the? It's, it's get shit done. You can do whatever you want, man. So, well, so, so well, let's let's kind of start there, man. So, I mean, yeah. you went to law school. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, when you got to law school, I mean, did you go the attorney route for a while? Did you jump into the corporate world before you transitioned to entrepreneurship? Like, what was that journey like? I went in the, I went in the corporate world, uh, got into real estate, um, and had a, and and just started my first little deal. I was just talking about it at Las Vegas at a little club. I was uh, at had a great time, and my first deal was a, a bank owned property. It was for twenty five thousand dollars. I lease purchased it. Was kind of I've written a couple books on lease purchasing, and I had one tenant uh, stayed in there for fourteen years. He literally paid off my mortgage, and then didn't exercise his option, which he renewed every year. And then he moved to the property downstairs. I got the property back, which I didn't have a problem with. Long story short, I, I then decided to go to California. You know, loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly, and um, I sold the property so we, my wife and I, would have some cash. And I got one hundred eighty thousand dollars for that original twenty five thousand dollar investment. Did I have the fever? Yeah. So I'm in law school, very hard working. I did, you know, I'm doing the intern stuff and all that stuff. And lawyers don't make a lot of money in a lot of cases, by the way. And the real estate fever returned, 
And I said, I got to, you know, I got to get back into it. I'll, I, I just loved real estate and I didn't love, I didn't have a passion for law. And, you know, it, it was just sometimes these things just happen, you know, after spending four and a half years studying and all that money and everything. I had a great mentor, by the way. That's the one thing I want to share. His name was Max. And if it wasn't for him, I'd be cleaning a Slurpee machine or flipping burgers somewhere. Okay, and if, if there's one takeaway, I love takeaways from this conversation today. I want everybody to find somebody, and I don't mean a phony, baloney, bullshit guru who says, runs to the back of the room and says, give me forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. I mean a real person like you, Josh, somebody who is real, who is honest, who is accountable and successful in his own right. Find these people and have that one-on-one -on -one relationship. Man, you shorten the learning curve. And it was the one smart thing I did in my life, other than marry my beautiful high school girlfriend. Uh, see how she's listening, so <laughs> I'm covered. 30th wedding anniversary coming up, right? Wow, congratulations, you guys. Here. That's awesome. She's not listening. <laughs> you'll, you'll catch it on the reruns. Okay. But, but the thing is, um, that's the guy that made – find that one person who's doing it and shows – I saw this one guy, at my, Max, and on the phone – he would make more, he would close people in one phone call. I never, I was the world's shittiest sales guy. And here's a guy on the phone closing people, making more money, money on a real estate deal in one phone call than I made selling hot dogs for Swift Premium in the South Bronx. And I said, I gotta, I gotta learn from this guy. So basically, I was a surf and, and uh, you know, I worked for this guy. Here I am with all this education and here I am, I'm fetching him coffee and bagels. And you know what? It was the, one of the smartest things I ever did because I got the million-dollar education. So I was willing, you know, Max used to always say, everybody wants success, but few are willing to pay the price. I was willing to pay the price, go there after work, go there on weekends uh, for no pay, just to be around a master, a millionaire, self-made, righteous millionaire. I mean, that to me, if anybody can just find that person, that to me is what you need in this business to succeed, someone who's really doing it. Uh, you know, not not somebody who hands you off to a uh, some third world uh, virtual assistant, uh, uh, and you know the rest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to bad mouth too much. I'm known for that, but I, no, I, <laughs> I, just, I, I, I just like to tell it like it is. And, when I, and that's why we started this podcast. And I, and, I, and I think that all of our listener base is there with you because you got the always gurus that have never done it themselves. They've never built it. And you got to be so careful. They're not, they don't that, care. That's what pisses me. They don't care, Josh. They take these. These are good people out there. You know them. You work with them. I work with them. These are good people. They work so hard. They save their money. All they want is part of the American dream. And they put their faith in someone who's a pretty good speaker. Okay? And that person won't even talk to them, won't return a phone call, will not be accountable to them. Why does that piss me off so much? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I couldn't agree more, man. It's, it's just what it, I don't know if they're just preying on because there's such a tight turnover ratio in the industry. You know, who knows? But um, I, I couldn't agree more. So let's go back to the mentor thing because that's so okay. important. And, you know, what was that What was that phone call like? Or, or how did you reach up to him to get him? You know, I know you're working for free. You yeah. know, so many people are like, oh, hey, can I just, can I, can I pick your brain? I'm like, no, I don't have time for you to pick my brain. Like, how did you reach up to get him to say yes to you? I, I, was, uh, I was rejected. I couldn't get past the guardian at the gate, Brunhilde, his secretary. I couldn't, get, I couldn't get my foot in the door. This guy didn't need me. His time was valuable. Millionaires value time. And they don't tolerate unknowns without referrals or anything like that. Okay? So, but who am I? Claude Diamond with the, all these degrees, and I sell hot dogs in the South Bronx, and I have a law degree and everything, and uh, can I see you? I want to learn what you're looking. They're not going to give me the time. So I, I got there. Real, I heard he's a millionaires usually get up very early in the morning. Did you know that, Josh? What's They're that? usually the first to yeah. get there and the last to leave. Yep. Okay? And uh, so I just got there very early in the morning. It was it was like sun was rising, and I, and I, and I said, Mr. Max, I'd love, I'm, I'm, I, I want to speak to you. And it scared the shit out of him. You know, he didn't know. <laughs> and he said, are you the guy who's been bothering Brunhilde? And I said, yeah, I just want, I want to talk to you for five minutes. He says, well, I, I think that impressed him. He said, go down the street, seven, get me a bagel and a cup of coffee. I'll give you 15 minutes. Boom. That was the, that was the moment, the pivotal moment. Yep, okay. Yep. And, and that's how I did it. So you can, man, you can, you know, you got to hustle. You, you know, somebody who's really successful is not going to take a call to a stranger. The girls will do it because they want all that money. And, you know, but, and there are legitimate mentors out there like uh, yourself and hopefully yours truly. 
um, you know, who do get paid for what their time, knowledge, and energy. And I don't have an issue with that. This guy was so busy, he didn't need an intern. He didn't need me. But it was, it was one of the smartest moves I ever made in terms of business because I learned from somebody who was already – you want to be a millionaire, hang around with a millionaire. You want to be a loser, hang around with losers, hang around with bullshit artists, hang around with guys who are driving used Pintos, okay? You know, success leaves clues, and I'm not trying to sound materialistic or pretentious. you got some of these gurus out there. They live in neighborhoods that you and I wouldn't drive through. Okay, find out about this guy. Make them accountable. I, I beg people who want to do business with me, ask me for references, please, because my clients are my best invisible sales force. I don't have, I, you know, the, le the emperor has no clothes. You ask a guru, anybody else, hey, can I have references? And oh, we got to protect the privacy BS line. Yeah. So, you know? so then, you know, you, you got this great mentor. Um, you know, you're going out there. You become uber successful in the real estate space. Yeah. You know, you what, what happened where, because I, I know you, you transitioned out of it. Like, you know, what happened at that point and made you want to go out there and, and go a different path? Um, I, I just, I wanted, I wanted the freedom. I'm a crappy, I'm, I'm a really crummy employee. I, I just, I don't know why. I just, I resent authority. Even my good bosses were assholes. <laughs> I, I, I just resent the authority. I was never paid enough. I was always worried about money. And then, so I wanted my own business and real estate was the answer for us. And we came to California, went to law school, start, and law school, really, not to disparage it, helped me draft. I designed some really fantastic contracts and I know what questions to ask. And I don't deny anybody, uh, a legal education is a really smart thing to have or have a legal advisor in your sphere of influence so you do things the right way and you don't get into trouble and you, you avoid mistakes. And so I was doing the real estate. My wife and I were working together. We, we owned all these houses in San Diego, very expensive community. And um, we were still living in a two-bedroom apartment. Okay. Honey, how much was the rent? $750? 750 a month. We're, we got all this real estate, beautiful properties all over that I picked up foreclosure, rehab, lease purchase, whatever I could, whatever I could do. You know, and we were getting a nice cash flow, but we're still living in a two bedroom apartment. And, you know, the thing is, that was the price we were willing to pay for. So my wife didn't have to work anymore. We had a new baby and I wanted her to stay home. And I was doing that, and then what you said earlier, some new doors, some new adventures started opening up. You don't want to hear about those, do you? No, I'd love to. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, people started asking me, how do you do this real estate? How do you do this lease purchase, this option? How, you, how do you do all this stuff? I see you wheeling and dealing in your ads and everything. And um, I started telling people, and um, Claudia, my wife, isn't that a sweet name? Yep. Um, she's a Jersey girl. She heard me on the phone once giving all, don't you love to talk to people in the beginning, give all that free advice. She heard me on the phone talking to these people, giving all, all the answers to all their questions. And I got off the phone and she came to me and, you know, really sweet. And she said, schmuck. <laughs> and I said, what did I do? She said, well, you work so hard for all this information. Why are you giving it away? And I said, well, what else could I do? Who would pay me? You know, and that's that self-doubt and that lack of confidence that a lot of us have. And that was a pivotal moment. That was a, um, a, a revelation, an epiphany. It, it, I, said to my, I said, well, who would pay me? And she said, why don't you find out? And the next person was in L.A. and they said, gee, I saw, I saw an article you wrote. I wrote a lot of articles in those days in magazines. And they said, we'd like to buy you lunch and pick your brain. I said, well, I'm, my wife says I should charge more than a lunch now. And I said, can, can you pay me $1,000? And they said, gee, Mr. Diamond, we didn't want to pay you. <laughs> and I said, well, what is it you really want? And they said, um, well, we want to know, uh, we want your contracts, and we have a lot of questions, and we, we have problems with tenants and evictions and damage. And I said, if I can save you, if I can save you to a, a time and avoid all these issues in the future, would it, wouldn't it be worth $1,000 to save $20,000? And she said, That's a, she said, you got a good point there. Okay. That was my first consulting or mentoring fee. And I started mentoring people, and boom, another bit. Uh, I mean, uh, crushing it with mentoring, and, and uh, I started public speaking. And this is pre internet days, okay? Okay, the Stone Age. You, were, you, weren't, you were a baby or not even <laughs> existing yet, maybe. But, and uh, the thing about it is, this opened up my mentoring business in real estate. I love teaching people one on one. I didn't want to do the guru. 
you know, take your money and give them, hand them off or, or just give them a book and tape and say, have a good life. Thanks for the $20,000. Uh, I wanted to do more. So I developed a business model. This is before Internet now. We did it all on the phone. Actually, I used to get on airplanes and fly to people yeah. all over the U.S., man. Made a lot of money, but boy, was I tired. And, and then things started to change. I started to do it on the phone. And then another revelation started happening. Am I talking too much? No, you're doing awesome. I love it. I, I, I found out why a lot of people, and this was my bad, a lot of people, and I was taking money from them, and a lot of people, well-intentioned, uh, intelligent uh, people, families and stuff, were giving me money and still failing. And that's something, and I, and I said, what's going wrong? What's going on here? What's, where are we missing? I'm teaching them to do the same thing I'm doing. How come they're failing? And, you know, uh, I, had to do a, I had to reverse engineer it and do an analysis. And, there was, and it was a, another epiphany, another revelation. People really sucked at sales. Today, they suck at marketing and sales. And so what I started to do, I wrote a book called, can I show the book? I don't yeah. want to be a schlocky. No, absolutely, man. Here's my book, the uh, the gut sales method. Then I wrote another book, uh, uh, you know. And if any any of your listeners want this, let me just tell them to send me an email, and I'll send it to them for free. How's that for? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Is that cool. How to sell with guts and stuff. And I wrote another book, the mentor about Max. How it's a fictional story about a guy who's down on his luck, meets the right mentor, and it's a happy ending. I love happy endings. Guy gets the girl, the car, turns his life around, but learning some of the principles of success from Max, Max the mentor. And so I start, I wrote, I started teaching people about sales the way I learned it from, from Max. And it's a pretty simple system about learning to ask questions, qualify, get phone, get commitment, and qualify people in the first three minutes. There you go. Are you married? By I the way? am, yep. Oh, okay. I was gonna. I was gonna send this if you were engaged or something. This is great on your honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So you know, so you're you're doing all this sales training and marketing, and you know, I, I saw a post last night on Facebook of you know some people going on, and it was a sales group. Um, how cold calling is essentially dead, and you can't. You know, there, there's. It's impossible to become a millionaire by working the phones in 2016. You know. Um, I mean, I totally disagree with that. Most of my sales and appointments happen on the phone. You know, what, what is your take with that? What does the sign say? Yeah. You, <laughs> do you give good phone? Okay. I'll tell you right now, there are three things we need to succeed. We need a strategies, whatever strategy in real estate or life insurance or whatever, used cars. You got to have strategies. I don't care if it's rehab, a wholesale owner, finance, lease, purchase, my favorite. You've got to have the strategies. You've got to have marketing which is my new big thing, social media and live streaming marketing. We're live right now on Meerkat and Periscope. We have hundreds of people. I, I, I don't know. I can't look at the screen. But this thing will be replaying all over the place, and people will discover Joshua Smith and his great show and, and me too. So we talk about marketing. Then sales is the third part. Out of the three, strategies, marketing for leads, or sales, what do you think is the most important, Josh? Can I call you Josh or Josh? Yeah, I, I, either or is good. I mean, I... I I, I don't know. I mean, I would think it's a three-legged stool. You remove one, it's kind of dumb. But if the marketing or if the strategy doesn't happen, then you don't have the marketing and sales to follow. The, the way I see it, if you could have, you could learn the strategies, you know, make a few mistakes, read a few books. You don't have to be an expert in strategies. You can kind of learn as you go along, make mistakes. I did it probably that way. Okay, second thing is marketing. You've got a lot of people spending a lot of, mark, a lot of money on marketing, on yellow letters and virtual assistants and all kinds of expensive systems and stuff. And if you can't convert those leads, even if you get some, okay, can you convert them? Can you monetize them? Or do you get on the phone and go, uh, 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 or you read a script or something like that? It's sales. You can live without the strategies or be minimal on them. You can have the, you don't need the, you need leads, but can you monetize those leads? Sales, I don't, this is a takeaway. Sales is the million dollar skill and you are doomed to fail if you do not understand the science and art of persuasion and influence, of understanding how to speak from one adult to another and not acting like a goofy sales guy who's saying, me, 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 give me, give me, trust me, trust me, like your other gurus out there. You've got to, if you can learn how to speak to people and make them comfortable and they feel that they trust you or like you and share information, you have that, you're in the kill zone. You're in an adult to adult moment. Okay. And 
this is the this is the key to making as much money as you want. Do you know my definition of success? I said it on Jamie's show. I'll mm -hmm. say it here because I believe in it for, with all my heart and soul. Yep. Yeah. I heard. I heard. I heard you say it on there, and I do know your definition, but I'll let you go with it. it it's a it's your show. I, yeah. But I believe. You know, my wife and I, we live really well. We live in California, Colorado. We travel to Hawaii, Pinehurst, North Carolina. We, we, we are debt-free. And I'm not bragging, uh, stroking myself here. We're debt-free. My kids' college is paid for. Our health care is taken care of. And we have really good health care. Our uh, retirement, I could have retired years ago. We have no mortgages or, or anything. I go to bed at night and I sleep well because I don't worry about money. And I have had times in my life I worried about money. You can take everything Claudia and I worked a lifetime for, really hard for. Take it all away from me and let God let me leave me healthy. And you get me to a telephone, and in 30 days or less, I will be in the top 1% of wage earners because I can give good phone. I got the confidence. I have the knowledge. I don't care if I'm selling widgets, used cars, whatever. I will crush it. I will be on top in 30 days or less. Strip my butt naked. Bad visual. Um, <laughs> but get me to a phone. And when you can say this, when you have the knowledge, the health, the confidence, when you get to this, this is the, this is the beautiful place you, you want to get to, that all entrepreneurs get to. When you're there, man, you're free the rest of your life. Yep. You are free. Look at all great entrepreneurs. What do they all have in common? They've all screwed up. They've all gone bankrupt or lost it for the most part, right? Yep. But they come back. We all know the stories of people, Steve Jobs and all these other guys and girls who, who have come back. Why do they always come back? Uh, they, I mean, they have the passion, they have the love, they don't quit, they're just persistent. and just All that good it. stuff that you talk about, right? And the thing is, but they're great salespeople. Yeah, they're well, great salespeople. I always say, I, when I do my presentations, I show a big picture, you're going to love this, Bernie Madoff. <laughs> yep. Okay, my hero, ladies and gentlemen. Now, obviously, evil man stole, got $68 billion over 20 years from people. You know what they, you know what, when they interviewed people after they arrested him, you know what they said about him? He said, gee, why don't you give him money and everything? So we, we liked him. Yep. He was a great guy. He was a nice guy, and he made us a lot of money. The guy was a master of persuasion and influence. Jordan Belfort, okay, what was the name of that movie he did? Uh, Wolf uh, on Wall Street. Or whatever. He, what, he used it for evil. People can be influenced. They can be persuaded. If you understand the science of how to ask questions and ask them with stroking and nurturing and make people feel so good, that they say, you know what, I like Josh. He's, he doesn't have a big office building. He doesn't have 50 employees. doesn't wear a suit or anything like that. But there's something about him that resonates with me. I want to buy from him. I want to sell to him. I want to do business with him. And if you don't have this skill in real estate, you are doomed to fail. Yeah, so, and I couldn't agree more with your comment on, you know, it's not the leads. And I always tell real estate agents, man, leads aren't your problem. They all think it is. But it's their inability to convert them to appointments. You know, like you talked about. Um, so with that, I mean, 2016, your average person sold so many thousands of times a day. Like, like what kind of frequency? Like, for example, I have a, a software company that generates online leads. And we have clients that generate 100 leads in a night. But I'm like, that's great. But the power happens then on the phone. You know, you got to get on that phone. You got to get down. That's where appointments are set. Um, so so what, do you, what is your strategy? Like, if an online social media lead comes to you, how mm -hmm. quickly are you calling? How frequently are you hitting them up? You know, if they're telling you no, I mean, how, you know, just walk us through what you're doing. I, and have I tell, well, the thing about it is we've got to learn to give good phone. We, we've gotten away from speak. We don't know how to speak to people. We're texting them, okay, or we're paying somebody else in a lovely third world country to call them up and put them in the sales funnel. That's bullshit. You, if, you're in the, if you're in real estate, you get a lead. You call that person right now, today, this minute, okay, and you use the system. You say, hi, Josh, got your phone number here. I think you contacted my office about, so how can I help you today, Josh? What did you want to talk about? Okay, that's a warm call. Warm calls are a piece of cake. So it, they're easy, but I call them directly. After I speak with, and I'll talk about cold calls too, because I love cold calls. Josh, you could go in the phone book right now. Let me call that person. If I get them on the phone, I will engage them in a dialogue in 15 seconds. Without the rejection, without the I'll think about it, so I'll talk to my spouse, I'm going to light a candle in church and talk to my pet rock. I, I can avoid all that stuff with the gut sales method. Yep. Okay. But when I get somebody on the phone, um, I basically, um, I ask them questions, I put them into the system, agenda, 
where we say basically up front, can, can I ask you questions, Josh? You ask me questions. Let's see yeah. if we're a good fit, man. And listen, if, if this isn't right for you, I'm here for you. Just say, tell me it's over, man. Tell me we're not going to do business. I'll send you some free stuff and I'll leave you alone. I just want to see if there's a way where you and I can connect and do something positive today. You know, get through it, get rid of the BS and just talk to us. How do you want to be spoken to? We need to reverse engineer this and say what and be empathetic and say what how do I when I buy something, how do I want to be treated? Okay? I want to be treated. I go to a restaurant, I go to an Uber car, I was just in, in Vegas, and the guy was there waiting for me for one third the price of a taxi cab and I said, Hello, Mr. Diamond, and let me take your bag. And the guy drove me straight. I love this guy. I love I'm crazy about Uber now because of this good experiences I had. Why don't we give people good experiences? and give them what we want. That's the agenda step. Then the qualification step is to find out the time frame, to find out the need, and give them a Claude Barometer score, and then basically find out uh, how they make decisions, and can they make a decision today. Because if they can't make it today, it's over. I fire the prospect. I invented that phrase. You're allowed to fire the prospect. You're allowed to be control. And the problem with most people is they're subservient to the prospect. They're nervous. They don't know what to say. They're not authoritative, and, there's, and, and basically the prospect senses this, or they sound exactly like the other 19 guys who called him, and the prospect just beats the crap out of you. You know, you know the 11th commandment, Josh? No. Moses came down the mountain, one of them fell off, okay? It said you can still get into heaven by treating a salesman like shit, yeah. <laughs> okay? That's the 11th. So don't act like the typical salesman. Become Dr. Smith. You go to your doctor, Josh. What does he say when you walk in the door? Uh, nothing really, right? I, 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 I say mean, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, yeah. I mean, they're just asking how we're feeling. I mean, he, he's there to, yeah. to serve me, I guess. He goes, he serves you. He says, Josh, how are you, buddy? What, where does it hurt? Why are you in here? And you say, Doctor, my back, my neck. What this is bothering me? You know, I got this new uh, growth on my. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> and but, do you mind that doctor asking you those questions? No, not at all. No, does the doctor say, hey, Josh, good to see you. Did you see our coupon or our TV ads? And we're having a special on surgery this week. And hop on the table here, buddy. The price goes up on Friday, so you must act now. Does he do that? Nah, you, you, you're you right, man. He's asking engaging questions to help solve my problems, if there's whatever problem I'm there for. Why don't we all sound like Dr. Josh? Yeah. And just be up front and ask questions with stroking and nurture, nurturing and empathy, the powers of persuasion. And ask the right questions and get a commitment or get out. And that doesn't mean we can't do business in the future. I save all the information with people. I follow up with everybody. I send them a video email. I use a system called iJot, E-Y-E-J-O-T. I send them a video email. I usually attach a free book or something they can use. I even give them a link for a free, uh, uh, like you use a time trade or a scheduling system. Okay, so that they can call me for a free consultation. I send those out all the time. People come back to me. I make offers every day, letters of intent, one-page offers to people. If you're not speaking to at least five people per day, you're not taking – this is a hobby and it is not a business for you. You have got to learn a sales system where you're comfortable, you're having fun, which is a – word. I have fun in sales, man. I love talking to people. So, so yeah, I, 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 yeah, I love it, man. I, I mean, we can, I think anybody watching this can see your, your passion, your energy for it. Um, what happens? Because I get asked this question a lot of um, those that maybe don't have that natural energy and passion. And I don't know if yours is natural or if it was just learned over the years. But you know, a lot of people have. Why aren't they picking up the phone? Call reluctance, fear of rejection. And I get asked that all the time. Like, how do I overcome that? Um, you know, what, what, if I'm your client, what, what would you advise me there on? Well, what I do with my clients, and I'm the former world's worst sales guy. I was a, I was a horrible sales guy. I, I would do anything to avoid sales. Why? Because the reasons you just said, rejection. Who wants rejection? Did you ever have a girl reject you? You asked her out on a date or something, and she said no, and uh, did that little giggle as you walked away. You, nobody likes to be rejected. Nobody likes to be manipulated. When the prospect says, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. Send, stay up all night and write up some contracts, and, I'll call, and then call me in a couple weeks. Or come to my house and drive through two hours of traffic. Who wants to be treated like that? And this is the stuff that, God bless you, because nobody talks about this stuff. Thank you for bringing it up. We need to make people, give them a system and practice with them. You know how you get good at something? You learn it. That's what I did. I'm, this, I'm a shy little chicken. I mean, I, really. 
I changed. I, a leopard can change his spots. People don't believe me. Uh, but I, I, and my wife will come up. She knew me when I was 17, 18 years old. You know, I was, I was a scared little bunny rabbit, you know. And I, very quiet. They're very quiet. <laughs> you, you know, I was quiet then. With the good old days, right? <laughs> yeah. now, and I like that you talk about the, the practice and the role play. You know, it's like um, if you look at an NFL team. I mean, they spend, what, 60 hours a week practicing and watching their tapes and on the you know, field practicing to go step on the field for, for three hours. And it's like in the professional world. We just quit practicing. We just show up to play, and, and, and we lose that element. What's your favorite sport? Uh, well, you know, I don't really have time to watch a lot of sports, but I definitely definitely like mixed martial arts. So mixed USC martial arts. Oh, so does Jamie. Um, yeah. Mixed martial arts. What happens when you're in a match, but you haven't, you haven't worked out, you haven't practiced, you haven't shown up to the dojang or whatever you call yeah. it? Okay, you haven't been there in, in six months. What happens to your skill sets? That's, it's gone. You're going to get beat. Sales is exactly, we take sales for granted. We've lost our skills. We've lost the survival instinct. Sales, you can't take sales for granted. It's not, it's not instinctual. It's something you learn and you practice, practice, practice. I do this with my clients. We do face-to-face -face on Skype where we just role play or make live phone calls. I, I put my live phone calls on YouTube. Okay, I just did one with a guy who called me up for a real estate deal and I took control and it's all on my YouTube page. Uh, uh, on there, I have about 385 videos of f live phone calls of tr all free, all free, and that goes to the, my marketing if we have time to talk about it. But in terms of converting, how do you turn, pardon my language, chicken shit in the chicken salad? How do you turn cold calls into warm calls? Say hello, phone call. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi. Is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yep. Yeah, your name, sir? Uh, Joshua. Josh, I'm Joshua, I'm Claude Diamond. I, I, I apologize. I got your number in front of me here. Why am I calling? It's not about real estate, is it? Are, are you whatever? <laughs> yeah, well, you called me. You yeah, know. I have no idea. Attack me. Go ahead. You know. Yeah. No, I, I have no idea who, who you are and why you're calling me. You're the one that reached out to me. My wife says that every morning. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing about it is, Joshua, I have a phone number here, and it's been driving me crazy. You ever have a number on your desk? And I have your number here. It was You didn't have a property for sale or rent before I go, did you? Uh, no, I did not. Oh, you did not. You weren't even interested in selling your home. You don't, Maybe you don't even own a home, right? Yeah, well, we do own a home, and, and you know, I don't know if we're, now's the time to sell, but we do own a home. It's, are you comfortable in there? You happy? Yeah, I mean, it's... Stay in the home. I'm so sorry to bother you and everything like that. Listen, I apologize. I, somehow I got your number in front of me here. Maybe you advertised or, or tried to sell it one time. What's your email? Let me send you a free book. Or, or, I want to return the favor because I bothered you. Yeah, Joshua, gsdmode.com. Got it. You're going to get a free book from me and a video email with my apologies. And if you ever do want to sell your home or talk, have some questions about investing in real estate or doing something, give me, uh, give me, uh, give me the uh, privilege of speaking to you again, okay? All right, sounds good. Thanks, hey, Wrong number, but I made a friend. Thank you, Joshua. Yep. This is... This is just the gut system. I did a lot of moves, and I talked very fast for the time constraints here. I can, you, you can take a phone number out of the Yellow Pages and give it to me. I'll engage somebody. I'll say, why am I calling you? Is this your number? Uh, boom. I will reverse the whole thing. Whereas most people who call up a cold call uh, in real estate, they, they sound like they're reading a script. They sound exactly like the other 19 people who called. You can't do some. You can't expect different results by doing the same thing everybody else is doing. Yeah. You've got to be creative and inventive. Even leaving voicemails, Joshua. You've got to leave a voice. When you leave a voicemail, you've got to make it so the curiosity appears. Yeah. Okay. And, and so they say, "Who is honey? Who is this Claude Diamond guy? Do you know what this is about?" And they call me back. If they call me back, I win. Yeah. Sales is all about understanding the emotion of the EQ. And if I can, if they can, listen, I cry at dog movies, Joshua. Okay. If you can make me emotional. We, Claudia, I tell this story all the time. It happened last year. Claudia and I are driving out of Costco here in San Diego. She's driving. I see a guy with three kids on the sidewalk and the sign says, lost my job. My kids are hungry. Man. I said, honey, pull over. Give him money. Give him money. Feed those kids. I don't care. Was that emotional or in, an intelligent, uh, an intelligence or intellectual reaction? Yeah, it's all emotional. Can you imagine if you could, could do that in your business, where you make people say, "Yeah, what do I sign? What do I have to do? Help me buy a home. Help me sell a home." How do you make it emotional through the questions 
through the conversation and dialogue you have. So people throw contracts at you, throw money at you all day long. You practice this, you master this, and the magic always happens. Yeah. Every day I make money in my business, and all I do is talk to at least five people a day. That's a takeaway. Everybody on this who's watching this, speak to five people a day and ask them questions, and don't be a goofy used car salesman. Be the doctor. Be the professional. And watch what watch that magic happen. You will double and triple your business literally overnight. So um, let, let, let's say real estate, for example. You know, because they're not. It's not like an iPhone where they're buying every year when the new model comes out. You know, like in in, in Phoenix, Arizona, where I'm at, there's a million rooftops and about five thousand home sales a month. So you had that conversation. You got their, their you got their email for that nurture. What does that look like? I mean, what's too much? What's What's too little? What does that nurture look like? So when they are ready, hopefully they're raising their hand at you. You have to be a thespian. You have to make them comfortable. You have to create an environment where they, when they get off the phone, the question I ask myself is, what did Josh say about Claude? Did he, did he like this interview? Did the guy is too much energy? Did he talk too fast, too much? It's real important to me to give to give the, create the best environment so that when you get off this phone or off this call, you say, you know what? That Claude crushed it today. That was one of the best freaking interviews we ever did. I love the information. The guy wasn't schlocky. He gave, to me, a perception is reality. I've got to create something where that person, when they get off the phone, say, hey, you know, he's sending me a contract. I'm going to look it over. I'm going to call him back at 1030 tomorrow because I always preset my appointments or, or I close I really go for the close or a commitment in the first phone call, whether I'm doing sales training or consulting or a real estate deal, or I consult now with people on marketing too, by the way. Do you know we're in the stone age with marketing and real estate? We got these guys, these guys are still teaching this Fred Flintstone BS, uh, yellow letters and stuff. Nothing wrong with that. People always think I hate yellow letters and mailers and virtual assistants and, and things. But why is, let me ask you, Josh, you're in the business. Why are we in the freaking Stone Age and nobody, nobody, except maybe guys like you and me, are talking about social media and live streaming? What, what gives, man? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think that people have that tough time with change, and we're an industry that is acceptance of being a dinosaur industry. You know, it's just, just what exists, man. I, I don't, you know, I get asked like this question almost daily in the podcast. Because I used to do a lot of direct mail, 50,000 direct mail pieces a month in our area. Expensive, right? You know, yeah, and I get people like, hey, Josh, what, what, what would you put on a me direct mail message today? I'm like, well, let me ask you this. Like, what's the last direct mail piece you got in your mailbox? Like, well, I don't know. I'm like, why is our consumer any different? You know, the message doesn't change, but where a consumer's eyeballs are, you know, is always changing. My wife sent a Valentine's Day card to her son, okay? He's um, 25 years old. He's a manager for Safeway Corporate. Great kid. And... Um, and uh, the, he, she, she called him up on Valentine's Day or the next day and said, how did you like the card? And there was a little gift card in there. We always said, he said, I haven't gone to the post office yet, Mom. I'll probably go in a couple of days. Millennials don't go to the post office. Big revelation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and guess who is the new big market in real estate today? We have millennials. Well, I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're 2.4 billion millennials. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, they're going to be buying real estate yeah. eventually. They're sick of living in mom and dad's um, uh, uh, attic eating Twinkies. They're sick of living in a one-bedroom apartment making their landlord rich. They want to be – the American dream has always been – I disagree with Grant Cardone on this. He says you not, should not get your own first home. You should invest in, 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 in a business and stuff like that. I say no. You do both. You get yourself into a home because five years from now, when you pay down that mortgage or do double payments or whatever you do, or you get the tax benefits, and that's your own place, and there's something cool about your own place. Okay, that place, you t I told you the story about my $25,000 condo that went to $180,000 okay, in 14 years. Where would you make? Where would a schmo like me make that kind of money in fourteen years? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was. I mean, you got to get in your own home and get into there. And but we've got to get. We've got to start teaching people about using this social media. I get the best quality leads at, for TNT, Time and Talent, zero cost. I just went to Vegas. I two great guys, um, Ray and Daniel. They invited me to Vegas. You know how we hooked up. Periscope? Yep. Okay. I just got a new corporate account, a big five-figure corporate account. They, got, they found me in, for sales training and marketing. They found me on Periscope. They went from Periscope to Facebook. They went from Facebook to YouTube. Then they finally, number four or five, went to my webpage. 
and the trust was there from all the content that I put out there that they finally gave me their email and scheduled with me a half hour. Do you think anybody is going to go directly to your web page and give their contact information anymore without you earning that trust? Yeah, they're going to do their due diligence, absolutely. I don't care who it is. Claudia's mother, 89 years old, is on um, Facebook every day and Googling and, and stuff. Everybody is on these little... We've become the walking dead. We're walking, looking at these little devices. We're going to get virtual reality soon where we're not going to hold the phone. I did a video. T I did a group call today. There's a new device coming out where, the, where you're going to wear a bracelet and your phone is going to be, it's going to be projected on your arm. You're going to be making calls, watching movies, on your arm is going to be the screen. Yeah. I mean, this everything is around this new technology, and we're still talking about. And there's there's idiots out there. They're spending out what 160 billion dollars a year on magazine ads and newspaper and radio and TV. People, what do you do when you see a commercial on TV? I don't, right? well, I don't, I don't watch it, man. You don't even watch <laughs> TV, right? Yeah. yeah man, People, young people, don't watch TV. They don't even have cable service. They just want Wi-Fi so they can watch Netflix or Hulu or, or um, Amazon Prime. Yep. It's it. all cheap. And why aren't we marketing with content, doing pictures and Instagram, doing videos in YouTube and in Facebook Live and in Meerkat and in Blab and in Periscope? Why aren't we going on to Snapchat? It's, listen, you might say it's for the little ones. Snapchat is going to be a reality before the end of this year for everybody because take a look, CNN, Wall Street Journal, they're all starting to pay attention to Snapchat. If you are not putting out content into the Internet today for your real estate business with articles, podcasts, videos, what audio, whatever you're doing, put out good, compelling content, you're doomed to fail. And I'm not a demotivational speaker. But nobody's talking about this stuff. They're telling them to use the post office with a one percent ROI. Truth be told, yeah, or, or, or go pay Zillow three hundred bucks a lead. Yeah, right. So, so with your social media strategy, I mean, do you have a, a certain because you got like the Gary Vaynerchuks that are like you know give 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 ask. I mean, is yeah. it one of those things where you just or, do you have a, a, a something like that that you follow or is it just give that compelling information because I know that will eventually drive to my website where then I can ask from there. Yeah, well, this is. Shh. Don't tell anybody this. If you give people, when, when reverse engineer it, when you go, when you want to search about the history of that water bottle you're drinking right now, you want to find a better water bottle. Do you want to read a lot of commercial stuff? Oh, it was invented by ten thousand little elves in Afghanistan. Or do you want to read about why the, uh, the virtue of the water bottle, why it's safer, it's environmentally friendly? You want to find the emotional trigger that resonates with you, the information you're looking for, not the price goes up on Friday used car stuff. So if you can put out content relating to real estate, because that's the show, okay? Can you put out the five mistakes people make in Phoenix buying homes? Three things you need to ask your broker before you sign the contract. Ten things you should know about register about uh, the, using the right contract. Um, what neighbor should you think about the uh, what kind of schools uh, neighborhood and schools should you ask about before you move? Put out these articles in blogs, in videos. Put pictures out of different areas, the best restaurants in the neighborhood you want to. If you're young, where you want to live, and put out pictures in Instagram and Pinterest. Do Snapchats and tell a little story about different neighborhoods or sections in, in Phoenix. You live in Phoenix, right? I Correct, think. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so you put out this content, or if they were for investors, you're trying to attack investors. Talk about the five mistakes I made with lease purchasing. The three things that uh, the three things you should never do. Five things that uh, um, how I made ten thousand dollars in one weekend in Las Vegas, not gambling. You put out. Interesting. You know Amanda o <coughs> Oleander. She's on Periscope. She has 600,000 followers. Young, young woman. She paints, okay? Starving artist. Today her painting sell for $35,000 and up because she put out this wonderful content about her passion for painting, how she paints, what she does. Now she's living in L.A. selling her paintings for five figures and up. Wow. She's only 24, 25 years old. There's so many stories out there like that. Where you don't have to add, don't, you know, if you go to a web page and there's, uh, what do you call them, those things that come across the screen? What do you call those? Um, it's like the, the lead, lead boxes. 
you know, the boxes, yeah. the, the slide across, or the things that pop up. What do you do? Same thing like commercials on regular TV, if you want. You click, you go to another web page, you go back to Google. We've got to, how do we earn their loyalty, their trust? How do we make them a fanatical fan by the wonderful, compelling, entertaining, contemporary content that we give these people? Okay? And they will follow us. They say, gee, what is Josh going to say next? You know, I love your videos. I did, you know, honestly, I just start, discovered you because you asked me to speak, so I did my homework on you. And I started watching your videos, and then I watched another one, and then another one, and then I registered and everything. And that's the way it works today. True or false? Yeah, true. And what, so you can do mailers to people, but that's what your competition is doing. Do something fresh, original. Give people value. And watch the magic happen. They will come into your universe. They will respect you. They will buy from you. They want to do business with you. You have to earn it, though. Yep, yep. Love it, man. So um, do you do any type of, uh, with Facebook, I mean, is all your all your strategies free strategies, or do you any type of, because the Facebook targeting is insane. I mean, you can, from income to age range to their behaviors, you know, I mean, are, are you doing some uh, uh, targeted Facebook ads as well? I do I do Facebook boosts when I um, when I have something special like I just did Las Vegas and I wanted to these were nice young guys I wanted to get them a better audience so I I, I really I, I did a little Facebook targeted boost here in San Diego and Vegas to get the a lot of people signing up when I come out with a new book or something like that or I want to promote my I'm a mentor I mentor people one on one in sales in social media marketing in re creative real estate when I want to promote my business a little. A Facebook boost, big deal. It's twenty dollars a day, and I can I can hit ten thousand people of the age group that I'm um, that I'm targeting. That's smart marketing, yeah. okay? And big deal, twenty bucks. Better than licking envelopes or having all my all the money I'm spending go to a nice young girl in Guam who speaks broken English, and she's going to talk to my customers. Tell me this isn't insane, Joshua. Yeah. Tell me this isn't crazy. If we're in business. Listen, we're not a multi-million dollar business. Most of us, it's, mo it's mom and dad, it's Josh and Claude sitting on the kitchen table with the iPhone, with the laptop or the iPad, making phone calls to Craigslist or Zillow. Okay? And you're going to delegate, and people delegate it and obfuscate everything because they're scared to give good phone. And you got, you've got to pay attention to sales so you become so fun. You can have so much fun in sales. And people are people, okay? I think, I think Obama said it today in Cuba, by the way, when he was there. He said, people are people. Cuban people aren't bad people. They just have a different kind of government, and we've got to learn to understand them, and they understand us, and they'll come over to our side eventually anyway, because we make, because we're right. No, no <laughs> politics. But you know, the thing about it is, you know, we just need to communicate to people, attract them. We are the light bulb. They are the moths. Let's bring them into the light with our great content, with our accountability, I say, you know what I say? I, I, my three hundred and something videos. I say at the end, ever, ever at the end of every one of them, call me. I answer my own phone, okay? And I do answer my phone. I don't answer every call, but I return every call. I send a lot of free stuff out there. You can't just say "gimme, gimme, trust me, trust me" anymore. It doesn't work. That's nineteen seventies selling. This is 2016, and you better you better be Mr. F you better be the uh, uh, Jetson, not a Flintstone. Yep, yep, couldn't agree. And, and like you said, I mean, you got to have a positive impact on their lives somehow before they're going to think about doing any, any type of business with you. Um, so you know, I've heard you talk in other podcasts about you know you, you've created all this massive success in many different businesses, but I know you've also had points where you created success, lost it, and had to rebuild. Mm -hmm. And in those moments, like I've yet to meet anybody that's super successful, that's self-made, that hasn't had those low moments. Um, so, so what are some of those, um, you know, low moments, which then turn into our best learning experiences and really define us as human beings, entrepreneurs? What were some of those best learning moments? I love that question because, you know, um, I remember, oh my gosh, it had to be 18, 19, 20 years ago. We hit a lull. I mean, it was... And, Claudia and I had a major financial commitment, and I just had a dead two, three month period. The money just wasn't coming in, you know. And you know what? You know what's like living with women. Worry about money different from men. Men, we can live on a rock with a box of uh, mac and cheese, and we don't care. Women don't sleep well at night. They worry about money differently from men. I'm not a chauvinist, believe me. Um, and the thing, and we were starting to get worried. This financial commitment was coming up. And it would have been devastating to us. And 
And I just got pissed off. I had this thing. I just got pissed off at myself. I said, stop acting like a loser. Just get your ass in gear. And I got on the damn phone and I just worked harder. I didn't get off that phone. I kept working and working and working. And a couple of days later, I got the biggest sale in the history of my company at that time. It gave us enough money to pay all the bills and all the things up, gave us the money for the commitment. And I went to my wife and I remember when I told her and she was almost crying. She was so happy. And I said, honey, you know, yesterday I'm a lo yesterday I was a loser and today I'm a winner. What the hell happened? You know, and I, I think a lot about this. I got focus. I focused on the focus. I got rid of the distractions, the deviations, and I just did what I do best. It's talking to people and trying to solve their problems. Yep. Love it. Love it. So, you know, I find that good becomes the worst enemy of greatness. It's so easy to get caught up in this, oh, it's good enough and get comfortable and coast. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you said before, you're a guy that easily could just be done and go out there and live a, a great rest of your life. What, yeah. what keeps you from not settling? What keeps you leveling up and, and, and never coasting and, you know, always striving for that greatness? <laughs> you know what? I could have retired a long time ago. Um, the thing is, um, and this is, I'm not a workaholic or anything, but man, I, I, I have, I love what I do. I get up every morning. I love what I do. I can get up, I exercise, I run, I go swimming. I get on my desk. I talk to the best people. I have clients in, I think, 16 different countries now. I have appointments. I talk to the greatest people in the world. They are just delightful to me. They help put food on my table. I am so grateful to these people, and they are so nice to me, okay? And it can't take, we need to respect our prospects more. That would be another show. I don't think people today, especially a lot of gurus, do not respect their prospects. And I think we've got, that's part of the marketing and part of gut sales is saying, I want to help this person and I'm entitled to be compensated. Okay. I do believe the salesman comes first and we need to be compensated, but I need to give them value um, on this. So, go, you know, the thing about it is I have, I, I have fun. I'm the only sales trainer that I am aware of that says the word fun in sales. Most people, sales is like public speaking, man. Yep. It, it is it is horrible. I told my wife, I'll never retire until my last day on earth. I love what I do. Uh, you know, uh, it's just so much fun. And it's the challenge. So making a sale, Josh, getting a commission by the sweat of your own brow. Tell me that isn't the second best feeling in the world. <laughs> you're yeah, young. Yeah. I might have to explain the first one. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're right, man. I mean, it's, it's a massive rush. It, it is such a rush. I love the rush. I love the sale. I love when people say yes. Okay. And it's just so much fun to give them the value. And I have so many success stories out there. I'm the only guy in the world who says, yeah, ask me for my references, but give me a commitment uh, on your side also. I'll give you the references. And if they meet with your personal satisfaction, what happens when we speak at 430 tomorrow? Right. Okay. I, I, you name me anybody who says, call me, I answer my own phone, and I'll be glad to give you references because my clients are my, are my friends, a lot of them, and they vouch for my veracity. You know, tell me that isn't the, uh, you know, I am, I am the luckiest guy in the world. I am doing exactly, exactly what I should be doing, and I make a phenomenal living at it. Yeah. Okay. I, and, you know, the thing is, when you've been broke in your life, Man, it's so good to have money in the bank. <laughs> you know? Okay, it is. I don't need a Lamborghini or any of that stuff, but I just like that we have a cushion. My kids are taken care of. My wife is taken care of. I, if I'm hit by a meteor yesterday, it, it's okay. Everybody's taken care of because I gave good phone. Yeah, love it, man. Yeah, following your passion is huge, you know. And, and if you don't love it, you know, don't get into it, and and because uh, it is difficult, you know. But when you're passionate, man, it keeps you. Keeps you going there. So uh, you're you're an author, you know, right? You're 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 obviously somebody that you know, I can tell that uh, takes their own personal self development to, um, to the next level, right? So what have been outside of your own books? What have been some of the books that you might recommend that have had a massive, powerful impact on on your life for entrepreneurs? Um, the pa um, the psychology of persuasion by Cialdini. Um, who's a professor of psychology from University of Phoenix, I believe, right? Or somewhere around there. Do you know, you know who I'm talking about, right? Huh. It, it, it's C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I. -I -I. Very a great book about psychology of the buyer, of the seller, of sales, of persuasion, of influence. You have to understand how people think and feel. I get up every morning. I say, why should someone buy from me today? I am a secret. How do I convince somebody to, to work with me when there's all this competition out there? Why do they work with a Joshua or a Claude? 
you know, and you have to understand that. So it's a great book. Um, Dr. Um, the Games People Play is a phenomenal old pop psychology book. And um, uh, think, um, what's the other one um, that is student wrote? I'm okay, you're okay. I love those psychology books uh, on there. Um, I love Brian Tracy. Does anyone, Brian Tracy, The Psychology of Success is probably, and Brian's a neighbor of ours, and Brian, you know, he's in Del Mar, but, but, and The Psychology of Success is the most motivational thing I've ever heard. And who's the name of that one powerful speaker? Um, he says, you got to, um, what is it? You got to be hungry. Um, I forgot his name. I'm embarrassed now. He's a wonderful African-American. He's probably one of the greatest speakers in the world. Eric, and, Thomas, Eric Thomas or Les Brown? Or? Les Brown. Okay, thank yep. you. Thank you. That would have been embarrassed if I, Les Brown is, gives me goosebumps. Yep. Listen to Les Brown on YouTube. Yep. Okay. Uh, listen, listen to, um, um, Brian Tracy, great stuff. Great. There's so much good stuff out there, but motivation by itself is not enough. You need, yes, we need to motivate ourselves. And the thing that motivates me the most is when I go to the bank, because that's, that, that gives me, that says maybe somebody believed in me. Somebody was willing to, who worked hard for their money, was willing to share it with me because I gave them something of value. And you know, that's, I need that. I need that. That's my motivation, but you need the skill sets. You need the leads. You need a marketing system that doesn't make you broke, and you need superb sales skills. That's a takeaway from this uh, conversation today. I don't know if it's a conversation. I almost lectured here. <laughs> I love but, it, man. So, uh, yeah, I got a few last questions for you, but before we jump into those, um, where's the best place to, if we want to reach out to, if our listeners want to reach out to you, um, if they're interested in learning more about your training, you know, obviously getting your books. I mean, what's the best place, Claude, to... Uh, um, look you up and, and call you know what I'm not going to give all these phone numbers and web pages and everything folks just go to Google and type in Claude Diamond there's only one other Claude Diamond in the US and he's a phenomenal country western singer in Atlanta Georgia I'm in Winter Park Colorado I'm in Maui Hawaii or San Diego California just type in Claude Diamond and you'll find me I'm all over the place I'm in YouTube with 380 something videos I'm on Facebook I'm on Snapchat I'm on Instagram you'll find me and if you if you find me, send me an email. Okay, you can find my email. It's mentor at Mac anyway. I'll send you a free book. I'll give you a free consultation, whatever you want. Yep, love it, love it. So, um, you know, I know that you you talked earlier about hey, if I lose it all today, I know that I can go back there and gain it back. So let's say yeah. that happens. You know, your health's good, family's good, but you lose it all, and you only have a few hundred bucks left to your name. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, how, what would you immediately go out there and do um, to go out there and create this empire, that rebuild this empire? You know, I, any it, that's a great. I love that question. I'm going to try and answer succinctly. I had a guy a couple of weeks ago called me. He said, "Claude, I'm down on my luck. I need help. I mean, I have no money to pay you or anything. Can you help me?" I said, "Hey, man, look, I'll give you 25 copies of my book, uh, my sales book." And I want you to go downtown to an office building in Phoenix or L.A. or wherever you live and take that book. I'll send you the PDF. You print out the books. I'll give you a freedom on copyright here. And you go print out those books. If you don't have, I'll send you five copies. And you go sell these books. I sell them for $100. You sell them for $25. I'll give you the books. You go in an office building. Sell them for $25. And if you and you know what? Don't tell me you can't go to people and say, I've got the one of the world's greatest sales book here. If you'll, It's $25. If you don't like it, I'll give you $50 back. Okay? And do you know what happened? He didn't take me up on it. Yeah. So I'm not trying to be demotivational or negative here. Everyone wants success, but are you willing, are people willing to pay the price? Okay. And that price might be getting your pants falling around your ankles in the shopping mall in front of Santa. Okay. But if you were starving, if your, ch if your children were hungry, what are you going to do? Come home every night and say, sorry, kids, daddy couldn't pull the trigger. Or are you going to man up and go out there and knock on some doors? Like one of my, Michael, my, one of my, favorite students, Michael Buckles, goes out there every day and knocks on doors. Michael was broke. He was living in a car, and he went out there, and he needed a little bit of help, not a lot, because he had so much courage. He knocks on doors. Today, he's doing deals every month. Okay, that's courage. you got to have courage. To, you know, you, you, know you, you can't just say, I want to be a millionaire, man. you got to earn it. you got to work for it. And, if you, and I'll tell you what, if you do what everybody else is unwilling to do, 
Just knock on doors. Talk to people. Not talk to people the right way. Anybody can sell a book, a car, an insurance policy, or real estate where we can really crush it in terms of income. And so you know, you talk about okay, you got to put in the work to to be a millionaire, and you know, there, there's you get this like fad of all these entrepreneurs around this word hustle, you know, and they think their forty hour week is hustling. You know, I mean, like, kind of sure, talk about. Forty well, hours, I mean, man. Yeah. I hit that by Tuesday. I know, right? So, so <laughs> what, 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 is, what is? How do you define hustle, and and, and how much action? You know, because you're a guy that that's created millions and become a multimillionaire and, and started from scratch. How much hustle does that truly take? I'm still hustling. Yep. I love the hustle. It's it's I, I, the the fun thing is, it's it's an, it's enjoyable. It's stimulating. It's a challenge. It's saying, man, if I talk to people, they're going to give me money. You know how much fun it is to make money by talking to people? And so I'm not a workaholic, but um, I get a, I work on this. I work eight days a week at this business. Yeah. And I, if I want to take a nap, if I want to go take a swim or a run, I want to take my beautiful wife for our anniversary out to dinner, I can do whatever I want. But why do I want to stop doing something that's fun that makes me a lot of money? Yeah. You've got to have the passion. You've got to have the skill sets. Working for the sake of working is, man, that's, we've all had bad jobs with bad bosses, and we're watching the clock, and it's boring and everything. I can't. You've got to find your passion. Barbara Sinatar said, do what you love. The money will follow if you're practical. Okay? So you, if you're in real estate, you said how many deals were being done in Phoenix? 5,000 or something? Yeah, 5,000 roughly a month right now. 5,000 a month. That's 5,000 people. Why aren't... Can't Josh or Claude get a small percentage of those 5,000 people and make more money in one month than some people make in a year, a couple years? What do we have to do to get one of those 5,000 deals? Buying, selling, investing. We've got to hustle. Okay? If you don't love this business, if you don't have passion, if you're just saying, I want to do it for the money, the likelihood is you're not going to, you're not going to put in, you're not going to have the gravitas. You're not going to put in the effort that you need. It's got to be a, you know, you could tell me, Claude, I'll give you a million dollars a year if you're a toll collector or a septic tank cleaner. I'm not going to stay there very long. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll do it just for a little seed money or get going or something. But it's not something I'm going to do the rest of my life. Work is a joy of life if it's the right work and you're properly compensated. Yeah, love it, man. So, um, what is? I, I know you you do a ton of these podcasts and you speak and you're in, you know interviewed all over the place. What is like the one question? Um, that you don't get asked, that you wish people would ask, that you feel is important. Is that your real hair? <laughs> <laughs> people always ask me, you know, is that your real hair? And it is, really. Oh, yeah. They, they, they ask that. Uh, I, I need that to be asked. Uh, question. That's a good one. Um, you know, how do you stay so – how Claude, how come, how come you're 63 years old and how come you look so young and have so much energy? Go ahead. No one ever asked me that one. Yeah. So, all right, man. I mean, you're, you're 63 years old. You're out there grinding. You're still, you know, working eight days a week. You have all this energy. How do you do it, man? How do you keep it up? I just, you know, do what you love. Do what you love. Find your passion. You know, uh, live live life reasonably. Okay. And the magic will always happen. You will. You can eat better foods. You've lived with less stress. You can uh, you devote time to your relationship, to your family. You can do a lot of philanthropy, philanthropy work. You can. I love exercise. I love going out and running and swimming every day. And you know what? Um, you can even if you don't have the DNA, you can you can be young at heart to your last day. You want to you, um, you want to be you want to feel as good as you did your first day on your last day, and that and that comes from doing things you love and removing some of the stresses in life. And money is stressful. Yep. And, and so I'm doing exactly what I should be doing and loving every minute of it. And that's why, as Joe Newman said, I can't wait for tomorrow because I get better looking every day. <laughs> yep, I love it. So um, last question for you. Um, you know, you, you, you talked about, hey, if you want to be a millionaire, hang out with millionaires. If you want to be a loser, hang out with mil losers. And yeah. you know, it's said in business, we hear this, this kind of term all the time of you are the result of five people that you spend the most time with. There's so many listeners that reach out of, hey, Josh, I'm there. Like, you know, I, I'm ready to, to level up and take it to the next level, surround myself with, with people at the next level. But if I want to go start hanging out with millionaires, these dudes are busy, you know, right? Like, how, how do you go make sure that you're reaching up for those friends and, and, and surround yourself with those right people? Hang out. Where do millionaires hang out? 
They're people just like us. But if you want to be a millionaire, hang around with millionaires. Find out where they are. Make them an offer that's reasonable, okay? Give them something. Give them a benefit. Solve a problem for them, okay? And find out where they are. And, and you, you need to be in that environment of success and see how these, how do these people do it? What is their secret sauce, okay? What do they do? Me, I, I show people. I make, I get on the phone and anybody can see what I do. Just watch some videos and watch me in a live phone call with Joe McCall or somebody like that. Watch what I do. Emulate, copy, and learn. Um, you've got to be in an environment. If you're taking advice from, you know, everybody lo has an opinion. Everybody loves to give advice. And we unfortunately take it from people who haven't heard the right to give it. Yeah. Make sure you hang around with people who have earned that right. Okay. If a guy's if a guy's in front of a room speaking uh, at a real estate club, and then he goes in the parking lot and he's driving his nineteen uh, his uh, Kia uh, nineteen eighty seven Kia or something like that, that might leave you a little clue. If he lives in a crummy neighborhood, is he really? And I'm not trying to sound materialistic, but success and failure leave clues. Find the success, emulate the success, hang around with success, find real pe people who are real. Okay, and they're out there. We have all this. You know what's so great about today? We have all this information in our fingertips today. It's all here. Just find the righteous people. Find the people who are real, who are transparent, who are authentic, who give us, who are, you know, you know the BS artists, okay? I'm not going to pay $5,000 to walk on hot coals and think I'm going to be a millionaire on Monday, okay? Find those people who are doing it honestly, doing it successfully, who are going to be accountable to you. See, I'll tell you what, the successful people I've met in my life are wonderful, they're happy, and they're giving. Okay, I sit on the board of several charities and things like that. I meet these people, and I cannot, they write checks because they just want to give back. They are that good. That's the people you want to be on. Volunteer, be on different, uh, go to different organizations and watch who the people are on the board of directors. Hang around with them, earn their trust, and then maybe maybe you can ask for a favor. Yeah, I love it. So, you know, I started this podcast. It's, it's going on almost a year. Um, and, and the reason I want to start, because I think you and I both share that kind of same, same passion of the gurus, the quote-unquote gurus that are out there selling snake oil, right? So I'm like, man, it, especially, no, I shouldn't suggest in the real estate space. It's in every space. But yeah. in the real estate space, we see a lot of top coaches that have never actually even sold real estate. Themselves, yeah, yeah. You know, right? So, so I'm like, <laughs> instead of whining about it, let me go do something about it. And go out there and create an environment like this where I go out there and interview the doers. Guys like yourself that, that are, it's not talk. It's like you've been in the trenches. You went out there and built these epic businesses. Um, so then that other people can take this information and go out there and create the same in their world. So any last pieces of, of uh, um, advice or, or inspiration, motivation that you'd like to leave our listeners with. So then that they can go out there and create that amazing life that they know they truly want and deserve just like you've been able to create. It's all about sales, ladies and gentlemen. It's about giving good phone. It's about speaking to at least five people a day. What you find a product or service, okay, that you're passionate about, study that product or service. If it's real estate, learn some strategies, study some stuff out there, okay? There's plenty, all the information, you don't have to give somebody a lot of money. All that information is on YouTube, it's on the podcasts. Wonderful, great information from people like Joshua Smith. Okay, and then do your marketing, but do it, but watch your budget, and you can get the greatest leads in the world by putting out content. But the thing that's going to get you to your financial goals, if that's important to you, and I think it is, is being superb, not many, not not adequate, not even good. You have to be superb in understanding how people feel, how they think. How to ask them the right questions, to, to make them feel good so that they like you, they trust you, and they want to do business with you. Focus on the power of persuasion and influence. Focus on sales 2016 and believe in your product or service and the magic will happen for you. You will hit your financial goals and you will have tons of fun while you're doing it. Yeah, I love it. Such powerful words. And to our listener base, I know you guys, I, I end every podcast with this, but information without implementation is really just the start of delusion. Information is not power. It's taking that information, applying it uh, uh, into your world, into your life, right? Um, taking action on that information, that creates power. So you guys just heard 
from, from an amazing guy today that, that's created multi-million dollar businesses in his world that, you know, is a massive doer, man. Shared so many amazing nuggets. Take something that Claude shared, um, go out there and implement right now so then that you can create that life that you know you want and you deserve. And Claude, man, I know how busy you are and this has been a huge honor, man. I've been, been really excited for this for a yeah, while. Well, and, and was mine. This was fun, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was... I was very few words came out tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you know, it, it, my, it, this is great, man. I, I, I love this, man. I love uh, love the Thank passion and, and doing amazing things, man. Like I said, this has been Thanks for, all you, thanks for all you do, sharing, taking the time out of your life to share information and motivation with everyone else. That's great. Thank you for inviting me. Yep, you got it, my friend. All right, you guys. Well, we will see you next time.